Yo, what's going on, buddy? This is Dylan Talk Sports. My name is Dylan. In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing my NFL Week 15 game recap. I know I missed Week 14. Uh, if you are curious of what to happen, go to my page, uh, my YouTube page, go to the community tab. I kind of explained it there. My computer just basically took a complete shit. That's why I didn't upload for a whole week straight. But we are back. We are doing game reactions of the entire NFL Week 15 a week. I'm going to be kind of going through every single game one by one, just kind of giving a quick like 30 seconds to a minute. Pretty quickly summary of the game, of my opinion, of kind of how the game went. Do I think it was a good thing, bad thing for each team? Of kind of good thing and bad thing of how each team played. And then I'm kind of going to give my opinion of each team's future going forward for what they should be looking forward to. If it's playoffs, better draft pick, etc. You get the gist. So without further ado, we're going to get right into this. If you're going to enjoy, as always, make sure you go ahead and drop a like. Very much appreciate if you do so. And without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we got the Raiders and the Chargers. This game was just an absolute ass kicking. The Chargers, they fired their head coach, Brandon Staley. The Raiders, I don't even know what the hell got into them because the week before that game, uh, they ended up losing to the Vikings 3 to nothing. Explain to me how you lose a game 3 to nothing, and then the very next week, you got there and put up 6 3 points. What the fuck? Aiden O'Connell had himself a day. Easton Stick, like, you look at these stats and you're going to be like, man, he didn't play that bad. Yeah, uh, it kind of hurts you whenever your defense looks like a bunch of fourth graders out there playing. I don't expect the Raiders to be playing this kind of football every single week now if they played this kind of football every single week they could have won the fucking super bowl but the fact that they're playing it now against a bad team kind of explains things looking at both teams future our chargers they're just looking forward to a better draft pick uh brandon staley now he's gone they can go look for a new head coach they're just going to finish out the season justin herbert is going to be out for the rest of the season and with the raiders they're kind of just, i mean they're going to be looking for a new head coach in the offseason whether they bring back the dude they have right now calling the uh calling the shots right now or not but they're going to be moving forward, and I don't think they're going to be making the playoffs. Next up, we got the Vikings and the Bengals, 24-27. This game was an exciting finish. Uh, it came down to the last second uh, in overtime. The Vikings, they had a chance to go for it on fourth and one. They were almost a field goal range. They were trying to go for it, just try to go ahead and get field goal range, seal the game, win it. Bengals were able to stop them. They got the ball back. Evan McPherson goes down there, kicks that field goal game over. But, I mean, looking at both teams, the stats-wise, Nick Mullins didn't play bad. Nick Mullins had a couple of stupid interceptions. That one where he kind of threw the ball and the defensive tackle looked like he was going to get the sack, but then the ball came out of Nick Mullins' hands, and then it fell right in the lap of the defensive tackle's basically chest. Great interception there. I thought the Vikings ran the ball incredibly well. 23 carries, 132 yards for Tyson Chandler. Well, Chandler, uh, a touchdown. Joe Mixon, he's still struggling to get the ball moving whenever it comes to running the ball. Jake Browning, the dude, like, I'm wondering now, are people going to... Look at him and whenever Joe Burrow comes back next season as Jake Browning. Is he going to want to go somewhere else and be a starter? Because he's playing really good right now. Is he going to be one of these kind of quarterbacks to where when the season's over, he's going to say, screw being a backup. I'm going to go be a starter somewhere. Look at me. I'm playing great right here. Overall, great game between both teams. Uh, Minnesota, the 7-7. If they're going to make the playoffs, they got to win out. I think I don't think they can make the playoffs being just 9-8. and eight, And they played Detroit in both or two of the last three games. So it's going to be a tough ride for them to get to the playoffs. I don't know if I can see them making the playoffs right now with the way how their schedule is ending. But looking at Cincinnati, 8-6, and six, they can still realistically make the playoffs. In order for them to win the division, they need the Ravens to lose out and they have to win out. I don't see that happening. Correction, they can't even win the division anymore. I think they're pretty much done out of that race because they lost to Baltimore in both uh, times they played them. Uh, but Cincinnati, they can still make the playoffs as a wildcard team. It's going to be a rough ride to get there. Uh, right now, I mean, as long as they win out, they're going to be in the playoffs. But they play, I believe... Pittsburgh and then I believe they play Cleveland again at the very end of the year so two tough games for them uh Cincinnati I do still think they can make the playoffs probably as a seven seed to be honest we got the Steelers and the Colts 13 to 30 this was a, just like a funny game because I'm a Browns fan I hate the Steelers watching the Steelers crumble is a little bit sad but a little bit funny at the same time looking at the overall uh, integrity of the game Gardner Minshew went fucking off the dude is just playing like great football to be honest the fact that he was supposed to be the backup every single year in his career and somehow this is the finally time he found a spot where it's like him being the backup and now the starter gets hurt and anything direction in. He comes in and he is just playing exceptional football. He did throw that one ball that got Michael Pittman almost decapitated uh, about the Steelers corner that ended up getting suspended for the entire season. That I don't really agree with. But looking at the uh, Steelers, Mitchell Trubisky, one, uh, well, 169 yards, 16-23, a touchdown, two interceptions. Not the greatest stats in the world. It seems like at times Mitchell Trubisky, he's trying to play too safe. And then at times it's like when he tries to just go and say, screw, I can't be safe anymore. I got to force the ball that's where the picks happen it's like mitchell cannot find this like even ground he, whenever he plays ball there's a lot of drama surrounding the pittsburgh steelers right now i'm gonna make a video on that at a later date but right now with the steelers they are they just do not look like that old pittsburgh steelers that we are accustomed to watching overall it was pretty much just like a pure ass kicking from the colts i mean it started off with the steelers looking good 13 nothing but then the colts just went out there and they just started piling it piling it and piling it on looking at both team standings i think the steelers seven seven they have like a slim shot to make the playoffs they would obviously have to win out they got the Ravens again. They have the Bengals again. 
it's going to be a tough ride for them because the teams in the wild card spots right now, Cleveland is up there about a 9 and 5, Cincinnati and I think Houston or Indianapolis, one of the two are 8 and 6. So Pittsburgh is going to have to win out in order to make the playoffs, I think. Do I think it's going to happen? I'm not willing to put my money on it. That's just what I'm, my feeling. And Indianapolis, I really do think they have a shot to win the division. I said it a couple weeks ago. Hell, I said it back around like week seven or eight. I said Indianapolis, do not sleep on them. They can win this division. I would not be surprised if they do it. We get the Broncos and the Lions. I didn't really watch this game too much. All I know is from the, it got close. Where was it? Right here, about 10 28. You kind of thought, oh, maybe the game will get better. But then by the time the fourth quarter came around, the Broncos, they started to score this one touchdown, but then they had to just start doing onside kicks. Broncos kept on letting the Lions get good field position. Lions were just scoring like easy. You can see right here, Jared Goff, 24, 34, 278 yards, five touchdowns. The dude went off. Everybody has been talking for so many weeks now about Jared Goff, if he's really the guy for Detroit to lead them to the promised land with the way he's been playing these past three weeks, turn the ball over a lot, fumbling, interceptions. Jared Goff basically told all those haters, Shut the fuck up. Amon St. Brown did good. Jameer Gibbs was running the heck out of that ball. I thought the Broncos, they just never really got into a rhythm. They they showed the ability to put the points up out there. It's just a time where you saw the hole there. They The Lions were just collapsing on the holes and just taking them to the, the wood chipper. I think at one point with the Broncos, where we thought they were going to be going to the playoffs very, very easily. Maybe they could come out and win this division. I don't see it happening anymore. When it comes to Detroit, they're 10-4. They have a realistic shot to just go ahead and win this division. I think as long as they win... This upcoming week, they win the division or clinch the division against Minnesota because they also play Minnesota. If they lose this game, it's going to make things a little interesting going forward. We got the Bears and the Browns. This game, I'm a Browns fan. I have a full, complete breakdown of this game. If you want to see a full breakdown, I'll put the annotation up there in the top right part of the screen. But like I said, as a Browns fan, this game, I was on the edge of my seat and I was sweating my ass off watching it. Turnover after turnover from Flacco, just throwing interceptions. We had the interception when he tried to get hit Joku straight out of the seam, didn't hit him. We had the interception where Sergio Tomo was supposed to run a deep in, interception. I believe it was like the second quarter where it ended up being a pick six. That just, everything was just going bad. Like you look at this score and you say 17-20, hmm, the Bears, their offense might have come alive. No, the Bears defense was just picking off Joe Flacco and giving the Bears offense incredible field position but even when the browns looked like they were down and out joe flacco somehow in that fourth quarter said you know what did i throw three interceptions yeah but i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna lead you all to the promised land i'm gonna get us a win he goes out there for 374 yards hits the two touchdowns one to joku another one to mark cooper and then hits a beautiful float floater straight up to david and joku who runs it all the way down inside about the 20 25 yard line and gets us a field goal range to win it. Now you be thinking, hmm, is that it? No. With 30 seconds to go, somehow our defense, supposed to be the number one defense, souls on us. Like right here with 32 seconds, I'm thinking, fuck yeah, we won. That's it. Bears get the fuck out of town. But the very first play, seven seconds to go off the clock. Should have been a pickup of 20 yards, but the, luckily the guy dropped it. Next play, we get the ball thrown out there to the outside once again, but then he takes it for like 40 yards up the sideline. Luckily, we were able to keep them out of field goal range, which made the Bears go for Hail Mary. That was the most stressful Hail Mary I ever had to watch. The ball literally went into Darnell Mooney's lap. He should have caught that ball. That is one of those moments that the Browns would be looking at it like, whoop, there's another Browns moment where the receiver caught the ball in a Hail Mary. We lose that way. But it seems like for once, and I don't mean to punt it, we are finally getting the ball to bounce the right way. Looking at both teams, Chicago at this point, they are just like hoping the Carolina Panthers keep losing so they get the number one overall pick. And with the way their records right now, they, I think at some point, Bears fans thought they were going to go to the playoffs as long as they won out because they could have been like nine and eight for all we know. But they they need to just keep losing, get better draft picks, rebuild for the future. Justin Fields, I still think he's he can be the future for this team. Uh, when it looks at Cleveland, nine and five, three games to go. Division and number one overall seed is still on the mind of Browns fans. But I don't see it happening. I think at lo as long as we went out, you get the wild card spot. I do see us losing at least one more game within these last three games. So if we can at least go 2-1 and one across these last two games, we will be in the playoffs. But I'm not going to lie. Division would be pretty cool. We got the Commanders and the Rams. This game I'm not really going to talk about much because I didn't really watch it that much. All I know is the Commanders, they just did not do anything in this game until, like as you can see, the fourth quarter. They started to come back. They started to make it interesting. Uh, the Rams, they pretty much just put an ass kicking on the Ram or on the Commanders. Uh, Kyron Williams ran the heck hell out of that ball. Matthew Stafford, people have been talking about he's playing some of the best quarterback play we've seen in the NFL these past couple weeks, and I will agree on that. I think right now with the Commanders, they just do not look good on defense, offense, anything. The fact that they bench same how is a little bit sad. Moving forward for both teams, Washington at four and ten, they just need to be looking forward to a top over five overall pick and start discussing what they're going to do at the quarterback position. Are they going to roll with Sam Howe or are they going to draft somebody? And then with Los Angeles. 
seven to seven, you're gonna probably make the playoffs if, as long as you keep this pace up. Do NFL teams fear them? Because that's what I'm hearing from ESPN is that they are probably the most feared team coming out of the NFC besides the 49ers. I don't know about you, but that that could be an understatement. Look at the Buccaneers and the Packers, 34-20. Baker Mayfield looks like fucking Tom Brady, prime Tom Brady out there. 22 of 28, 381 yards, four touchdowns. The dude played great. Jordan Love didn't have a bad day. He had a good day, 29-39, 284 yards, two touchdowns. He did good. He had a couple of nice passes. The thing with Baker Mayfield was he was just picking apart the Packers defense. He was just throwing it anywhere he wanted to, and the receivers were taking that ball to the crib every single time. Now, I know what everybody in the Baker Mayfield land is thinking. They're looking at this game, and they're saying, Holy shit, Baker Mayfield, best quarterback ever. Look at the way he played. Do y'all not realize the way with Baker Mayfield is he's going to play great in a game, but then the very next day, he's going to stink it up. It's just the way it is. And believe me, I'm a Browns fan. I stuck with Baker Mayfield for, four, for about four years. I know how the story ends. Now, in no way am I rooting against Baker Mayfield. I'm just saying I know how this story goes. Don't be surprised if he goes out there and stinks this week. Looking at both team standings, Tampa Bay 7-7. Seven seven. They, I feel like, are now the favorites to win this division. Will they? I don't know. I mean, I'll pick them to win the division. I thought the Saints were going to win the division at the beginning of the year, but right now, I guess I'll roll with Tampa. Uh, and Green Bay is 6-8. and eight. I don't see the wild card spot being in their favor. I think they play Carolina this week, so you better win that game. But, I mean, maybe a wild card, if anything. Maybe you get the 7th seed, but I don't really see it happening anymore. We got Houston and Tennessee in 19-16. This was actually a pretty entertaining game until, like, the last, uh, going into, like, the last uh, fourth quarter. The first quarter, as you can see, nothing crazy. Second quarter, it kind of was boring. Titans up 13-3. We kind of thought, oh, man, this is going to be a Titans game where they can go out there and maybe shock the world. But then the Texans got a couple field goals. You're thinking, oh, okay, here we go. Maybe we'll get interesting. Case Keenum, believe it or not, played some good football. And the reason why they actually played a little bit better was because the run uh, defense from the Titans is a little bit uh, sluggish here lately. And Devin Singletary was able to just gash that defense. Case Keenum did fill in pretty, pretty well. Uh, with CJ Stroud, he was out with the concussion, so he was not playing. Case Keenum had to step in and play in this game. I think he played good. Looking to the other side with Will Levis, 17-26, 199 yards, had the interception. He, I feel like, was more of a game manager in this game, where in the weeks before, we saw Will Levis actually go out there and play some pretty good football. Here lately, they've been asking to be more of a game manager. I don't really understand that, but kind of going forward for both teams, uh, Tennessee, no playoffs in sight. They're already eliminated. And Houston, if they can get CJ Stroud back, whether it's this week or next week, and try and keep winning, division is still possible. But I think right now they're probably going to be just a wild card team if CJ Stroud is still out. But I think, like that, like I said, CJ Stroud comes back, 100% you have a chance at the division. If he don't come back, you're probably going to be praying for a wild card. Look at the Jets and Dolphins. I'm not really going to talk about this game at all because, like, what is there to talk about? Uh, here's how we're going to talk about it. Jets offense, poo-poo. Dolphins offense, money. Jets defense, trash. Uh, Dolphins defense, good. I mean, is there anything else to say? I mean, if you want me to talk about the players... Two would play good, no Tyreek Hill, but he didn't really seem like he needed him. Jalen Waddle did pretty good. Uh, Trevor, Se Trevor Simeon started for this game. I mean, you can look at the box score. He didn't play good. Brees Hall didn't do shit. Garrett Wilson seemed like he didn't do shit either. There was talk about if Aaron Rodgers was going to come back. At this point, if I were him, I would not even want to come back to this team. Going forward for both teams, Miami 10-4. They're looking forward, I think, possibly trying to go get that one seed away from Baltimore. Uh, they have a shot as long as they went out and Baltimore or loses a game going forward. It's possible. In New York, at this point, I wouldn't even be trying anymore. Just lose every single game. Get a better draft pick. We got Chiefs, Patriots, 27-17. Not anything really crazy to talk about in this game. Patrick Mahomes didn't really play the best. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, one interception was off of Carrot Darius Tony's hands. Popped up in the air, got intercepted. Patriots offense is still trash. Uh, Bailey Zappi's not playing well. Uh, they already back bench Mac Jones, as we know. I think going forward right now, Bill Belichick, he doesn't give a fucking shit about this team because he already knows he's going to be fired after the season. Um, going forward, I think right now the defense is playing okay. It's the offense is still just trash, and I'm curious to see how this team's going to look next season. Kansas City's 9-5. They're still kind of in the hunt for the one seed, which I'm afraid they're probably going to end up somehow getting because Baltimore and Miami are just going to beat the shit out of each other up around the top. Uh, and New England, they are 3-11. Probably not going to get the one overall pick if Carolina keeps losing, but top five, still still capable. We got Giants, Saints, 6-24. Tommy DeVito, the cutlets have run out. Uh, Derek Carr, he came back, played pretty good. It seems like with Derek Carr, he's playing good against these bad teams, but then whenever he plays a really good team, he's trash. I remember a time like two years ago where people were talking about Derek Carr is the most underrated quarterback ever. He's so good, just people are not giving him the respect. Where is it? I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Derek Carr is a good quarterback. It's just there's times where he just does not look like it. I think Tommy DeVito, he was basically just trying to carry this Giants offense. Their offensive line was not blocking for him. Uh, Defenses-wise, the Giants was not that good. New Orleans, 
their defense was just smothering Tony Vito. Like I said, the offensive line could not block for him, so their defense was just hunting him down. The only funny thing about this game was whenever they were sacking Tommy DeVito, they did a little Italian hand gesture, so that was pretty cool. New York right now is 5-9. and nine. They're not going to playoffs. They're kind of just going to like this, fuck it, I don't care about this season anymore. Let's just restart next season. And New Orleans, 7-7, seven seven, could still win the division. I feel like I'm going to throw up talking about this game, but I mean, we got Atlanta, Carolina, 7-9. Do I fucking care? I mean, the Falcons, they scored the one touchdown in the second quarter. After that, I mean, we have field goal. Field goal. Wow. Field goal to win the game. Carolina should have won this game. Uh, Atlanta had the ball down inside the red zone late in the fourth quarter. Could have at least got a field goal to make it like 10 to 6 and made Carolina have to go down there and get a touchdown. Made it a little bit more exciting at least. But I mean, I guess exciting for Carolina to get another win. Uh, the, the crowd was nobody. There was like nobody in the stadium apparently. Going forward for both teams, Carolina, we already know they're just going to get the number one pick, which is going to then go to the Chicago Bears. So Carolina, I don't really know what they have to fight for this season. And when it comes to Atlanta, they're six and eight. They're kind of in this like limbo mode where it's like they're good one week, but then they're bad the next week. And then they're good, and then they're bad. Right now, six and eight. I don't know if they're going to win the division. For all I know, they could end up fucking around, win the division, and then get blown out in the first round by either the Eagles or the Cowboys. So we got the 49ers and the Cardinals, 45 29. Uh, 49ers have pretty much shown themselves to be the best team in the NFL. I'm not, I'm going to stand by that and say right now they are the best team ever in the league. Christian McCaffrey is amazing. Uh, George Kittle is amazing. Debo Samuel is amazing. Brandon Ayuk is amazing. Brock Purdy is probably going to be winning the MVP if he keeps on playing this way. I think the Cardinals, they played good. Kyler Murray didn't play god awful. He just had a couple mistakes in here and there. They had the two interceptions tonight. They're really the greatest thing in the world. This guy McBride off the Cardinals, he is really turning into a really good, reliable uh, receiving threat for Kyler Murray. I think going forward for both teams, San Francisco, they're going to win the division. They are, they're already going to probably get the number one overseas as long as uh, the Cowboys and the Eagles keep on fucking around losing these past couple games. Uh, when it comes to Arizona, 3-11. Maybe you get a top five pick. Maybe you can go draft uh, Murray Harrison Jr. out of the college. Who knows? We got the Cowboys and the Bills. This was actually a pretty exciting game uh, on paper, but then whenever the game started, it was like, I don't understand what this game is. We thought the Cowboys were going to come out there and light up the scoreboard. They got pretty much shut down by the Bills. We thought the Bills were going to come out there and light up the scoreboard with their passing Little did we know James Cook was going to be the star of the game. Josh Allen only threw the ball 15 times, completed it 7 times, 94 yards, had the touchdown to James Cook, obviously. Uh, James Cook just bitched the whole defense of the Cowboys. They said in the past the way you stop the Cowboys is you have to eliminate the ability to make them have to rush the passer, and which, how do you do that? You run the ball. There were people talking about this game saying that the Cowboys were going to come out there and just blow out the cow or blow out the Bills. They were going to come out there and make a statement. This was the time where they had to go out there and show that our defense can travel. The offense can go out there and score on anybody. I didn't think it was going to go this way. Overall, if you're a Bills fan, great entertainment game or entertaining game. If you're a Cowboys fan, you probably did enjoy it. Uh, but for both team standings, 10 and 4 for the Cowboys, they're still good. They can still win the division as long as they went out. And the, I think the Eagles had to lose a game. Uh, when it comes to Buffalo, 8-6. and six, Probably going to make the playoffs as long as you went out. And I think they have a realistic shot to go win out. If Miami does lose a game, it is said that Buffalo, as long as they went out, meaning they beat Miami in that last game of the season, and Miami loses one other game here in the next two weeks, Buffalo wins the division. Sunday Night Football, we had the Ravens and the Jaguars, 23-7. This game was just ugly. I mean, the Ravens, they didn't really do much to win this game. Jaguars, they just gave up every opportunity to score in the first half. I mean, they had, I think, three field goal opportunities to go get some points in the first half. They fucked around and missed on every single one. I mean, they had two missed field goals, and then late on in their half, where they got the ball down inside the 10-yard line, and they went down there and decided to run under the play rather than spiking it and having a chance to maybe just at least get the three points out of it. They fucked around. They didn't get points. And ultimately, if you can kind of see here, if they had those three points, they'd be up around 16. They would be 23 to 16. Had a chance to maybe to go down there and get a touchdown later on in the game to win it, rather than feeling like you have to go get it all the entire time you could have at least kind of played a little bit slower. I think the Ravens played pretty good. Their defense showed up in big moments. Like I said, I really like the Jaguars. They kind of hurt themselves, but the Ravens defense did have to capitalize on those hurtful moments. The Jaguars offense just did not know how to play football in the entire first half, and by then, it was too late. Uh, looking at the Ravens, 11-3. As long as they went out, they get the one seed. If they lose a game, there's a chance they could possibly slip out of that one seed. If they lose two games, who knows? Maybe Cleveland slips up there and gets that division. And then whenever it comes to Jacksonville, 8-6. As long as they went out, I think they win the division. If they lose a game, it's going to be stressful for them trying to make the playoffs. In the last game, Monday Night Football, we had the Eagles and the Seahawks, 17-20. This was just kind of a fun game. Jalen Hurts, he was sick in this game. Uh, he had the two interceptions, had the tush push for twice to go in and get some touchdowns. I didn't really expect the Eagles to lose in this fashion. I thought they could lose in this game, but I thought if they lost, it was going to be a bad loss. That's almost like a wake-up call. The Seahawks realistically shouldn't have won this game. They won on that last miracle throw from Drew Locke into the end zone for Jackson Smith and Jigba. Coming to this game, we did not think that Jackson Smith and Jigba was going to be catching a touchdown from Drew Locke. Geno Smith? Maybe. Not Drew Locke. 
I thought in the first half the Eagles were going to be able to win this game, but in the second half they started dicking around. They didn't do anything right whenever it comes to their personnel blocking for Jalen Hurts. He was getting sacked a few times, like I said, with the two interceptions. And believe it or not, on that last interception that he threw at the end of the game with like 20 seconds to go, they were not even trying to get a completion there. I believe it or not, but New York Sierra came out and he said they, they were not trying to go get an actual completion. They were just trying to get a pass interference on that last interception. I don't know about you, but that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Uh, wrapping it up, Eagles 10-4. You went out, you win the division. Uh, you lose the game, Dallas is probably going to win it. If you look at Seattle, 7-7, they still have a shot to win the get into as a wild card, but it's a rough ride right now. But other than that, that's going to do it for today's video. That's been my full breakdown of every game from NFL Week 15. If you wanted to enjoy today's video, as always with all these videos that I do post here, if you wanted to enjoy, make sure you go and drop a like. Very much appreciate if you do so. If you wanted to watch the entire today's video, thank you very much. And maybe you, I missed a detail about your favorite team. Maybe I missed a detail about any of the games that w went on this week. And you want to leave your opinion down in the comment section down below as to how any of these games went, feel free to do so. If you are a fan of the content that I do post here and you want to go and hit that big red subscribe button, feel free to do so. And do not forget to hit that little notification bell to be notified the second I post. But without further ado, this has been Donald Talks. Sports. Have a great day. Peace.